Hello everybody, I've been invited to talk about my tech topics that may have an impact on the development of Sri Lanka's economy. In 1977, with the opening of this economy, we lost, or I believe we lost, a very important part of our capability. We went from a self-reliant nation to one where with an import mentality. Why make something if we can import it? from somebody else. Yes, it's a good concept. However, the one thing it does not do is retain our expertise within this country. What we are basically doing is exporting jobs. And nobody wants to do that. I have been involved in some work when I was a trainee at the State Engineering Corporation in the early six, in the late sixties and the early seventies. In work which even today provides me with a sense of wonder. I'll give you one example. Hydrokinetic drives for dredgers. Most cutter suction dredgers use high pressure hydraulics as the means of transferring the energy from the prime mover to the consumer. With water all around, uh, why the question was asked? Are we using oil hydraulics? There is no reason except that it is the way it was always done. So think outside the box and what we end up is to use water as the means of transferring the energy. It's cheap, it's all the way around us. It doesn't matter that it leaks, it goes back into the river or the sea. This concept was tested out very successfully in by using a cutter suction dredger on the Kalimi River. However, due to circumstances beyond anybody's control, that project was not pursued. And that's one example of doing things our way rather than just importing it. And when I returned to Sri Lanka in 2016, we had an area of my interest and expertise, which is offshore deep water gas, oil and gas, particularly gas, which is my background. We had the Dorado and the Barracuda discoveries. And it could form the basis of an extremely viable gas development project. In fact, thinking about it, I came to the conclusion that you don't need a product pipeline to go from the landfall of the, uh, the gas to wherever the consumers are, which in the concept that was proposed 
by a contractor was a 150 kilometer pipeline taking the gas to Keravalapitiya. My question was, why are we doing that? There is no real reason except that the gas turbines were at Keravalapitiya. So I thought, what you do is bring the gas turbines to the landfall. You do away with one pipeline, which is going to cost something like 200 million US dollars. It also meant that the most schedule sensitive part of the project, which would be the transport pipeline from the landfall to Kerala PT, will not, is not required. All of this meant that you save money, you, more importantly, you save time. Now, and I tested the concept I had with some very senior members of the oil and gas, the upstream oil and gas community, and what they said was, yes, it's a good idea, it is viable, why don't you do it? Then the bureaucracy came in and it stopped for various reasons I would not go into at the moment. But my presentation says gas discoveries in Block M2 underpin a viable gas to power project. We have enough gas in just one discovery, that's the Dorado field, for 10 years of 200 megawatts generation capability. With the current technology and with a natural drive reservoir, if we were to put enhanced recovery methods, it would be a lot longer. Combine Barakib, Dorado with Barracuda and we have the potential to develop more than 500 megawatts for 20 years and at a cost which is extremely attractive. In fact, everything else being equal, we can provide electricity to the Ceylon Electricity Board for free if they pay less than what they are going to pay for the LNG for the gas. To talk about costs, the contractor proposed a gas only development, gas delivered at the landfall site for 860 million dollars. My assessment is that for 500 million dollars we can include the power generation facility also. So the gas is produced in the Dorado field in 1400 meters of water is transported by a flow line to the landfall and at the landfall we generate electricity. What we have is extremely clean and dry gas. That means very negligible amounts of pollutants like sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide and so on, in fact nothing. We have nice lovely gas. So it is a it is a big disappointment that we sit on all this national wealth and nobody seems to be doing anything about it. My proposal is let's get after it. We are we have an energy crisis so-called, certainly we are paying a lot 
of money for our energy. Here, the gas comes for free. It is only the lifting cost. And that will not be susceptible to market forces, nothing. What it costs us today is what it will cost us tomorrow and for the years to come. Ten years in the case of Dorado, twenty years in the case of the combined development with vacuum. Why are we not pursuing this with more alacrity than what we are doing? We sit on all this wealth and we say we've got an energy crisis. Yes, we have an energy crisis, but the solution also lives is with us. And I will finish by saying a single phrase for which I don't know whether there's an English one. If there is, I'm sure there is. I don't know it. Tamang isata tama atamaya sevanat. We do it all from our efforts and that is the best for everyone. Thank you.